uh, Tour de Suisse Stage 3 2011. Peter Sagan's first stage win uh, in the Tour de Suisse. He's gone on to win a lot. Damien Kunigo is uh, hunting for the leader's jersey, so he attacked on the on the climb. And then now descending into the ski resort Grindelwald. Um, it's a pretty pretty technical descent, very narrow road, single track as you can see, a little bit of moisture in some of the corners as well. Really a descent that you wouldn't want to be going full gas with a Pierce again raging down your um raging behind you. And that is what Damian Kunigo has. And he takes some very odd lines, but he just seems to have huge balls really and just, just makes every corner quite quickly. Um so seven K to go this is gonna fly, but you can see in second wheel hunting him down is the young Peter Zagan. I think this is his first year on the World Tour, potentially second year on the World Tour. Um, but anyway, he, he obviously come back from mountain back, uh, background. Um, I think he's won the Junior Cycle Cross Championships. So he's come second in that. Um, so, you know, he, he knows how to handle a bike for sure. But look, now here, he catches the motorbike. And this motorbike now should pull over and let him go past. Like the motorbike, are, in my opinion, here is completely out of order. Because, again, look how much distance he's, he's gaining on the motorbike. Like the motorbike surely should just pull over to the grass here. Or... It, on this corner, what he should do is he should just pull really wide now to let Sagan go on the inside. Instead, this motorbike just keeps following down in Okunigo, and we're about to see some some chaos, really. So this is what I was talking about, but of moisture, like, Damon Okunigo just lobs the bike over and hopes for the best, to be honest, because he knows that Sagan's going to catch him, then it's going to be a tough one out. So anyway, what we'll see in, the, in a minute is around this corner, again, motorbike should pull off to the side, let Sagan through. Instead, he doesn't, um, gets around this corner, um, Scan ends up actually crashing at this point, and this is why I think it's one of his most unbelievable stage wins because he's literally crashed with six k go. So you'll see now. There's the motorbike. There's Kunigo, and then you're like, well, wait, where's Sagan? Sagan's gone. When you watch this live, you're like, wait, well, what's happened to Sagan? Because surely, surely hasn't just like crashed. Like why would he just crash around a corner? But we're going to see in a minute. We're going to see a Sagan just on the side of the road. So now there's a group three, 17 seconds. But Kuniko is just absolutely mental. Like he's a bit of moisture there, just goes full around every corner. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it's a technical descent. Um, he just seems to sort of be a bit gingerly. Like he's not properly like he's leaning a bike over, but he's not probably getting bold. Like if you watch some of the descenders like Nibali, like he probably gets his body as low as possible. Well, some of the more cautious people sort of lob the leg out, but not on as sort of through the corners, if you know what I mean, like, they're not properly, like, really descending, I mean, he is a good descender, clearly, I mean, like, if you're holding off Sagan and stuff, that's not, not too shabby, but you can see here that Sagan comes a cropper, um, I believe him, or you clearly must have, well, I don't know, if, is that Kunigo who overtook him, so did he overtake Kunigo, and then Kunigo went by him, I don't quite know, it's, it's very hard to tell, um, but I actually know, sorry, that was a different, like, that was, I think, was Lawrence 10 downs, potentially. Um, and then we also got Fuglesang behind as well, but we'll see them in a minute. So I think, at the moment, we still have Kunigo out front. It's very hard to figure out, because this commentary is French. My French is all right, but it's, it's not top qual. And um, the cycling news report is a bit bit useless from back then as well. So these roads, you know, is a lovely place to ride. Um, I've skied here before, but never never ridden a bicycle, but it looks tremendous. So that we've got Kunigo almost decking it on one of the corners. Um, the friend comes out, oh la 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 la, and it, it was exactly the sentiments that I echoed because it was a very, very uh, worrying moment. But Kunigo was a one of Giro, he's a good lad. I mean, I don't know, he could have maybe achieved more, but in my opinion, uh, if he went to a different team, Labrim Reed obviously were pretty good at turning out results, but I feel like he then went to Pro Conti team in Italy, it was Nippovini Fantini or whatever one of those, and they changed names every season, but he went to that team and then didn't really achieve too much. So you can see. Getting back to Sagan is coming back now, so he's crushed. I think he must have overtaken the other person. He's now apparently 21 seconds behind the leader, um, but I think he, he could be a, a, a fair bit closer. And then behind that, you've got a big gap for Lawrence Tendowns and Jakob Fulsang. Um, so here is Lawrence Tendowns riding for Rabobank, and um, we're about to see Jakob Fulsang. So another ex mountain biker, pretty successful, I believe. I think he might have got, I heard he got a silver in the 2000. And, 12 Olympics, but I think that could have been 2008, but, or maybe that was JC Pro, but anyway, all I know is he is a good mountain biker, and the lad came from mountain biking, and can descend, um, so we do love to see it, um, but this is what road bikes used to look like, not really any aero benefits, just a rim brake bike, skinny climbers going full up climbs, which is, to be fair, is all what we all ever want to see, that car needs to get out of there, sorry, doing a bit of Colton Kirby there, shouting at motorbikes, because that is his favourite hobby, but the technical features in the road, but 3k to go, um, Kunigo is absolutely flying on the stand scent. but there he is Peter Sagan's back so you know he obviously group two is not him uh Sagan managed to crash 
and now he's about to get back on. So at this moment, Kunigo probably has in his ear, Sagan's coming back on, Sagan's coming back on. And then you've got to think, what what would I do? If I was him, I think you have to lead out. I think if you let Sagan go on the front, he's just going to drop you through the corners because he's clearly a better descender. Um, you don't want to let him come through. Uh, because he'll just he'll force energy out of you. So you almost want to block him from coming through by taking, you know, sort of going on the inside and then pulling out and really making sure that you lead it down. Because to be fair, he's also going for GC as well. So, you know, that's the that's the main main importance of thing. I think he finishes the overall or something. Uh, Levi Lai Power, I believe, won. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the stage, he did in, indeed win uh, the yellow jersey in Sweets, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, he got the yellow jersey. Uh, but yeah, around these corners, you can Sagan was on the front, he would have properly railed it. Sagan's looking very confident, very relaxed. I think he knows, you know, I've got a skinny little climber. I've made it over the climb. How he made it over the climb, I do not know. But he is Peter Sagan, and he just does what he wants. Um, nice little shallows here. Um, it's like technical to the finale, um, to be honest. The whole the whole thing, and there's there's a big gap back. But I think when the helicopter pans back, there you can see Fugel Sang and Fugel Sang obviously in the left um, left Radio Shack tr track. I think it was back then, and uh, obviously Ted Downs uh, Rabo Bank, uh, not the most confident descending descending by um, Ten Dam. If he was saying railing, but like you can see here, like he's not messing around Kudigo. He doesn't add descent. I think it's just Sagan's, you know, a couple percentage points better, which out of every corner, especially on a very technical and sort of sketchy descent, is um interesting. Like here, he sort of almost gaps him out of the corner um a little bit. Uh, I guess just different line choice. Uh, but coming into 1.7k to go, I mean, you all you got to know is that the finale is very technical because we're in Swiss and they allowed to have corners in the last couple hundred meters. That obvious, you just have to tie up your shoelaces because that really will definitely win you the sprint. So everyone's tying up the little bow dials or whatever dials they have and getting ready for the old sprint. It's going to be a fast one. It's still sort of downhill into the sprint. And I think this is, you know, this is maybe where he is going for more for the GC and because he's pedaling quite a lot there and Sagan's so still getting a draft. But around the corners, I think... I think it really was the correct correct uh, point because also like if it's technical towards the end if you play it right you might literally just be able to box again out like he literally doesn't have enough room to get around if you sort of carry enough speed so that like it's sort of already hurting like if you go for a long one basically around a technical thing it's actually hard to come around because it's just you just run out of road and if you're already going like you know a speed like a fair speed into it to sort of overtake in such a short period you really have to be a lot more powerful because obviously wind resistance isn't like it's not a linear thing it goes to the cube cube root so or to, to the cube uh, what am i talking about you know what i mean two to the three is what i'm trying to say if you double the speed you get um eight times the resistance so yeah that's the um so you think that's what he should do he is doing that um you know he doesn't he doesn't look as lean as some of the gc guys now but he's still pretty lean like legs i feel like calves calf uh the size of people's calves has decreased significantly. So again, looking for a lean. 300 meters to go, leading him out. I mean, this is where you think, it's always going to be a tough one, isn't it, with Peter Sagan on his wheel. Sagan with a classic helmet, nice old glasses, just comes him on the inside. This is just, I think that's too easy. You shouldn't allow him on the inside. Oh, and then, you see what I mean? Like, it's quite technical. There's no way you're going to be able to come around at the end. So I think if, if Kunigo had played that slightly better, I reckon it could add him. Because, like, Sagan came up on the inside. I think, genuinely, Kunigo could have had it. And then this is like Fugel Sang and what's his face? Um, Ten Dams. And there you go, the inside line there. So the DS should have sold him. Get on the inside there and you're going to win the sprint because then you've got the best line coming into the finale. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Peter Sagan is a monster. I mean, it's three GC boys and then just Sagan. Like, that doesn't really add up. But nothing really adds up with the old man. Getting a bit of fans down him, I reckon. And I believe this is Joaquin Rodriguez, the old boy. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this throwback. If there's any races you want me to do, then uh, let me know. I did watch the run of Van Vlaanderen virtual today. Might do so. It depends. If, if I'm allowed to post it, then I will. Because I think it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, Van Avlaat, 435 watts. 40 minutes, about 6 watts per kilo. Pretty standard. Good lad. Um, I think it shows you how strong the classics riders are. Um, they can bang out 6 watts per kilo for 40 minutes. Uh, but anyway, cheers for watching. And I'll see you in the next one, eh? La fin de ce sprint final, il s'est glissé dans un trou de souris. Il n'a pas hésité, il n'a pas eu peur. Et c'est vrai que quel démarrage euh, spectaculaire. Et il arrive, on met en 4 secondes, 30 km, ça fait 2 minutes. Donc là, là c'est limite. Donc Damiano Cunego ne, ne peut pas s'endormir euh, sur les acquis. Il doit encore attaquer ses prochains jours dans les étapes de montagne, tenter de creuser l'écart sur, sur les spécialistes du compte-la-montre s'il veut avoir une chance de, de s'imposer sur ce tour de Suisse.